Okay. Welcome to the show today, folks. I don't have... I don't have a ton to talk about. What I do want to talk about, though, is... I bought knives. Yes. I bought, I think, like six, maybe seven knives. I got good feedback from subscribers on knives that they want to see in the next go around on reviews maybe some testing I'm not sure I don't know what I'm gonna do yet but I do know I've got one knife coming today the Lothar lick I think that's how you pronounce it it's an Amazon knife it looks interesting it has like bolsters I think a harpoon blade it's kind of funky what else do I have? I have, I went to Rosecraft Blades website and I bought three of their budget style modern knives. I didn't buy a slip joint. Rosecraft folks, this is my Rosecraft, Rosecraft Swayback, Clinch River Swayback. I think that's what it's called. See, it's got the Swayback. Yeah, I really want one of their modern, one of their traditional knives. It's the, it's the one with the stripes on it. It's this one right here. Check that out. It's a little more than I wanted to spend on an individual knife on this go around. So I'll have to come back, circle back and pick that sucker up later on down the road. But I've got this awesome knife here, which will probably be virtually impossible to top if you ask me but that knife's cool because it has retro vibes with the striping going down through the scales i'm looking forward to seeing that thing in person to be honest with you but i picked up i picked up a couple three to be exact more modern rosecraft blade knives they're pretty affordable too so wait till you see those suckers. Next, I got on Amazon and I bought a Vosteed Mini Nightshade. Yes, I have a Gerber straight lace that I always call a nightshade. I'm actually getting the nightshade, the Vosteed. It looks cool. It looks real cool. G10 handles. Uh, it's got like anodized red trim pieces like the stud the thumb studs and maybe the barrel spacers i'm not sure we'll see it looks cool and i like vosteed a lot what else did i get i got something else i can't remember oh i got an up and l number eight with a red wood handle beechwood red beechwood wood red in color dye whatever the hell they stain it with that looks like it's going to be a dinger. Yeah. I like buying knives. I do. It's fun. You you know, you don't get a huge box. It's not a pain in the butt. It's not. It's just you get a regular small box. You know, maybe a little smaller than that, obviously. But it's like a little gift. You know, and I pull it out and I get to talk about it. Pull it out and talk about it. The hell is that supposed to mean? But I got some knives coming. Now I'm working on that big project. You might have seen the video of the huge light. That is the biggest light that I have probably ever will ever make in that style heavy probably weighs maybe up to 200 pounds that's a big light when's the last time you bought a, a light at Lowe's that weighed 200 pounds never customer has a helicopter I wish I'd known they had a helicopter before I quoted the job that guy lady whatever i don't even know if i'm talking to a male or a female 
I keep it that ambiguous. Customer service is, is stronger in conjunction with ambiguity, if you ask me. I don't need to know anything about you other than you need or you want what I make. And that you want it done right and you want it done with good service. Other than that, don't need to know your gender. See, that's the problem with the world today is, is everybody thinks that they need to know something about somebody else. I don't want, I mean, I don't want to say I don't want, but I don't need to know anything about you. Heck, that's kind of really more important than people give it credit for. Not having the need to know anything other than what is necessary to get the job done. You're making my coffee. I don't need to know your gender. I don't need to know your preferences. I don't need to know your politics. I don't need to know anything. I just need to know that my coffee has been made fresh and tasty. That goes for everything, folks. We have a problem in the world today where people think that we need to know everything about each other in order to do a random process, a simple random process. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's like he misses simmed my pronouns. Well, and then the cop wants to go, ma'am or sir, and he can't. Because, of course, now he's got to dumb down his language to better suit the sensibilities of the mentally ill. Now, he, the cop, is a he, says, well, what happened? Well, he... said thank you sir I'm not a sir I'm not going to be able to get to my point boy this knife's wicked I can't make a point I can't circle it back to something profound you ever have that where you think you're onto something boy you're dialing in you're going straight into that sucker and you're going headstrong and you're like I'm going to I'm going to be profound. What I'm going to say is going to make people clap. They're going to stand up in a room and it's going to start off with one person going Yeah, you want I want to say something like that all the time. It it doesn't happen that way. No. It doesn't. You can't, you got to accept the fact that you're not always going to say something profound in this world. You're not always going to be that guy that's like, oh, wow, did you hear what he said? I never thought of it that way. You know, I never thought of it until he said it that way. You want to be that guy, I know, or that girl. Here, listen to me now. Now I'm going to qualify everything I say with a guy or a girl. And then, of course, there'll be something wrong with that. Because at the end of the day, there's never it's never going to be good enough. You know, people like to criticize the National Rifle Association because they stand their ground and they don't budge on anything you know somebody will come to them and say hey we really think you need to change the color of the brass on the bullets from a natural brass color to a gray 
and they'll say, no, we're not going to do it. And then they'll say, but it will save thousands of lives. And then NRA will look at him and go, I don't care. Not going to do it. You're not going to get me to bend. I'm not going to budge. No matter what your request may be, we will fight it. Tooth and nail. We will fight it to the end. Now that... That, my friends, is unwavering dedication to a cause and a, a, and a greater understanding of the powers around that want to sculpt, bend, move, push, pull, yank, take, and serve you up with what they want you to be or do. Yeah. We don't have too many organizations out there these days that stand firm and stand strong to their resolutions. You know, the NRA said, hey, here's the deal. Yeah, we we know our citizens don't really need, you know, five, ten ARs in their household. We, we know they don't need 20, 30 handguns, cases of ammo. We know they don't need that. But that doesn't matter. You know, the guy down the street has 10, 20 Star Wars dolls. He doesn't need 10 or 20 Star Wars dolls. The other guy down the street has... 10, 20 jugs of water. At that moment, he doesn't need that much water, fresh drinking water. No. But he may need, you know, that one, that guy, that one guy with the Star Wars dolls, he may need those Star Wars dolls at some point in his life. He may need them. It may be a necessary evil that he has 20 or 30 Star Wars dolls right at his side to do something very important with you never know you definitely know the guy with the water will eventually drink the water so there's that this takes me to the knife world the knife world doesn't have an nra but yet we're still able to have various types quantities the ability to get and have all kinds of knives and you say, whoa, 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 Dick Richie, wait, wait, what about the stupid rules the knife world has? You know, gun world has stupid rules too, even with the NRA. Yeah, you know, with the bump stock crap, you saw that, and some other things. But in the knife world, somewhere they had ruled that a, a knife without a locking mechanism is okay but if that blade locks into place it's not okay you know stick me in a room with a dangerous person with this little fox pen knife this little tiny fox pen knife with a dangerous killer without the locking mechanism with the locking mechanism you're dead. You're cut up. He'll slice you up. He will be eating your thigh like steak tartare. Yeah, because that guy's a cannibal too now. Let's make it really om ominous. I, I mean, I'm trying to get my point across here. Trying to predict and predetermine dangerous people and trying to keep them from being more dangerous by not putting a lock on a knife or a bump stock on a gun, it's crazy to me. It's funny. It's actually funny. Because, you know, before they got to wherever they were at to do this dangerous thing with this little pocket knife, they drove a two-ton truck, a truck that weighs thousands of pounds, 
with a V8 engine in it that allows that truck to go 120 miles per hour and could careen into crowds of people or through buildings and take so many more lives. Lives, not knives, lives. Yeah, they drive this death wagon right to the front door of the scene of the crime where they will then go in and kill somebody with their pen knife. That's kind of strange. That's how, you know, it's kind of like, I don't know. It's kind of like, you know, you walk in, a butcher walks into a butcher shop to go to work. And he walks in and he walks right past that huge cleaver knife. And he grabs a wooden spoon and he starts attacking that side of beef with a wooden spoon. That's what that equates to to me. Literally. Gets out of a death wagon. A vehicle that... It's weird. We're very... Humans, we're very selective about our choice in weapons. And then also our angst in the ability to have access to those weapons. And what we don't consider a weapon that is more of a weapon than thousands of these. It's my Chevy truck sitting right there in front of me. I'm looking at a Chevy truck. You know, it's a Chevy 2500. 6.3 liter engine. I could, drive, I could drive that thing through a block wall and then keep going and drive it through five more. Us humans, we're confused creatures. We're confused. Very confused creatures, if you ask me. But I got some knives coming. And I'm excited about it. I'm always excited about knife ordering week. You know, I'm going to probably do this once a month. Once a month, I'm going to order like five knives. Buy five knives a month. So five times 12 is 60. That'll be 60 knives I'll eventually purchase throughout the year. You know I'll buy more. But I'm going to try to stick it to where I'll buy at least one knife a week. Maybe a, depending on the budget situation, I'll buy more or less. But... I've got like six coming, three Rosecraft modern knives, and then three other knives coming off of Amazon, Vosteed, a, a Lothar, and an Oppenel. Yeah, so I got like six total coming. I'm excited about the Rosecraft blade knives because everybody thinks of Rosecraft blades and they think of traditional slip joints like this, Swayback, you know? But they do modern flippers. And I've got three coming, three puppies. Rosecraft blades, budget knives, woodworking, camping, knife tests, all happening here with Dick Ritchie, Dick Ritchie Radio. The radio show that you can trust will come to you, come into your home. I'll fill your head with conspiracies rambles and rants and I'll leave you with no answers and a question in your mind of what did you just watch what did you just hear what did you just see what was that you're going to wonder you'll scratch your head as soon as you turn me off your television you're going to say what did I just witness what did I just hear was it wisdom maybe was it the lack of wisdom most likely was he funny? Not really. Was he interesting? A little. Did he make a point? Kind of. Did I learn something? Probably not. Of any value. Is he cool? Yeah, he's cool. 
Is he a bad dude? Oh, I'm a bad dude. You know I'm a bad dude. I'm fixing my tree right here. This is my electronic bonsai tree. Yeah. You know, people take these bonsai trees serious. You know, so do I. Look, I'm getting my branches all just the way they should be. You know, in a real world, if this was a real tree, I'd be clipping and trimming and whatever. But in, the, in, in my matrix life that I live in half the time, I just bend the branches in the direction I want the light to go. And I've got myself an electronic bonsai tree.